Toward the end of the Third Age, a new breed of orcs, the Urukai, emerged from Sauron's fortress of Minas Morgul, a kind not seen before in Middle-earth. Five hundred years later, the same type appeared once again in Isengard under Saruman. So, who truly created this new orc breed? Was it the eye or the hand? Hello everyone, and welcome to Middle-earth Tales. I am Dragon. Today, we'll explore the origins of the Uruk-hai. The Uruk-hai first emerged in the year 2475 of the Third Age. Contrary to widespread assumption, Saruman was not the original creator of the Uruk-hai. That distinction belongs to Sauron. Yet the situation is a bit more complex. Indeed, Uruks were first seen in the armies of Mordor, but were Saruman's Uruks exactly the same as those initially observed? To answer this, let's take a step back. Ithilien is a region in Gondor, nestled between the Anduin River and the Fl Duath mountain range that borders Mordor to the west. When the Dúnedain, fleeing from Númenor, arrived in Middle-earth in the Second Age, they settled in various locations, and Ithilien became the realm of Isildur. He established a city there, known for its watchtower, Minas Ithil. Being a frontier to Mordor, Ithilien was essentially Gondor's first line of defense against Mordor, making it a frequent target of attacks from Sauron's forces. Although Sauron had destroyed Numenor by rotting it from within, he had not forgotten the defeat they had inflicted on him in the Second Age. That is why he saw those people who had managed to escape from Numenor, who remained loyal to the Valar, as a threat. Especially with Isildur establishing a stronghold so close to his domain, it's no surprise then that one of the initial conflicts between Sauron and the Gondor erupted in Minas Ithil. Sauron swiftly captured the city with a powerful and rapid attack, and Isildur only managed to escape with his life. This event also proved that peace would not come to Gondor and Arnor until Sauron was destroyed. Thus, a final alliance between men and elves, who had battled Sauron throughout history, was formed. Following the alliance's victory over Sauron, Minas Ithil was reclaimed by Gondor, though it never returned to its erstwhile glory. After a period of absence, Sauron secretly returned to Middle-earth, still diminished, but having his minions advance his agenda. By the Third Age year 2000, following Arnor's complete collapse, Sauron directed his full onslaught towards Gondor, with Minas Ithil being his initial target due to its proximity to Mordor. Despite its weakened state, the city held out against Mordor's siege for two years, but was ultimately overtaken by the Witch King in 2002. After its capture, the city underwent rapid transformation to become the main stronghold of the Witch King, where all manners of dark arts were practiced. The tower, which had lent the city its original name, was henceforth called Minas Morgul, the Tower of Dark Sorcery. Of course, I must remind you that it was the Gondorians who gave this name to this place, Probably in the Black Speech of Mordor there was another name for this place, but we do not know that, as we know very little in this language. I explained this in detail because Minas Morgul holds significance as the place where Uruk Hai first emerged. After the city was taken by Mordor, there was a period known as the Watchful Peace lasting 400 years during which there were no conflicts between Gondor and Mordor, but time was working in Mordor's favor. Sauron continued to grow stronger in Dol Guldur, fortified his alliances with men from the east, the orc populations in Mordor increased, and during this time, a new breed of orc was born, the Uruk Hai. You must have realized that Sauron was following a strategy similar to that of his master, Melkor, just as Melkor created dragons during the centuries-long siege by the elves, a similar development occurred during the Watchful Peace, and the Uruks emerged when the peace ended. In 2475, 
the forces of Gondor first clashed with them. An army comprising orcs and Uruk Hai launched an assault from Minas Morgul, penetrating the territory of Ithilien. They pushed forward to Osgiliath, seizing the city and demolishing the Grand Stone Bridge that spanned the Anduin, linking its eastern and western shores. Boromir I, however, later succeeded in a counteroffensive that recaptured Osgiliath and reclaimed portions of Ithilien. In this initial confrontation, the Uruk-hai demonstrated their prowess as formidable enemies. We don't have definitive evidence on how Uruk-hai were created. Like Melkor, Sauron didn't have the ability to create new beings from scratch. He could only create new breeds by combining and corrupting different species. Although we don't know which creatures were used to create the Uruk-hai of Mordor, it's certain that they fundamentally stemmed from orcs. Uruk-hai were taller, bigger, faster, and smarter than Melkor's orcs. Despite being taller than orcs, they were shorter than men. They had darker skin, thicker legs, larger hands, and unlike orcs, they preferred broad and larger swords. Their symbol was the red eye, which was emblazoned on their shields. Five centuries after the emergence of Mordor's Uruk-hai, the world encountered another breed of Uruk. Saruman, one of the five Istari sent by the Valar to organize the peoples of Middle-earth against the evil of Sauron, gradually inclined towards evil himself, desiring to seize the One Ring to establish his own rule. After spending a long time exploring the east of Middle-earth and becoming an expert in Sauron's dark arts, he settled in Isengard. There, he even attempted to craft his own rings of power and, though it's unclear whether these rings possessed any real power, he managed to create a ring. It's evident that during this time, Saruman had closely studied the enemy's Uruk-hai. Not stopping at mere observation, he bred his own Uruks, distinguished by the white hand symbol and loyalty to him. Apart from one critical trait, there seemed to be no difference between his Uruks and those of Mordor. This crucial feature was that Saruman's Uruk High, although not fond of sunlight, could withstand it and march under the sun, for which there is no evidence that Mordor's Uruk High could do the same. Like Sauron, we don't know exactly how Saruman created his own Uruk High, but we're not completely in the dark this time. Treebeard from Fangorn Forest hinted that the Uruk High of the White Hand could be a mix of men and orcs. Indeed, Saruman commanded not just orcs, but also the wild men of Dunland. It's possible he used these humans in the creation of his Uruk High, which might explain why his Uruks could move under the sun. Returning to our question, were the uruk -hai created by Sauron or Saruman? It's clear that the bulk of the creation was done by Sauron, but Saruman also advanced this creation further. Therefore, the answer seems to be both. When Saruman's army was decimated at the Battle of Helm's Deep, nearly all of his Uruks were also destroyed. Those who managed to escape the battle at the walls of Helm's Deep were later annihilated by the horns, sent by Treebeard. What became of Saruman's uruk -hai after the War of the Ring is not known. There might have been survivors from Isengard who escaped during the attack by the Ents, and they may have joined the other survivors over time. A few weeks ago, I shared my thoughts on what could have happened to the Orcs in the Fourth Age, and those interested can check out that video for more insights. So, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The more subscribers we have, the more I plan to start different video series. Every subscriber, every notification turned on, every comment, and every like encourages me to spend more time on the channel because we are just getting started. Thank you for your support, and take care until we meet again.